Thanks for um, having me here to talk today. So today, um, I guess I am largely work with modern land snails and um, I worked at the museum as well and I'm, I'm doing a master's out of Murdoch University. So I kind of, um, as things they unfold, had the opportunity to work with the, um, the fossil Bothrembrin collection and um, working with a lot of the guys in um, the paleontology, Helen and, and Mikhail and so forth. So first of all, I think I'd just talk about Bothrembri. A lot of people don't understand, but there are actually a pretty cool group of native land snails in Australia. They're not the ones you sort of squash and introduce. So, um, and presents a really great case study to, to look at fossils and, and, and evolution and those kind of things. So Bothrembri, um, pretty large, about one to five centimetres in height. Uh, they come in all different sort of uh, sculptures can be smooth or nodulose, and some have very strong axial flames, striped or banded. Um, but what, and most importantly, their egg growth or their, their protocol is this pitted honeycomb sculpture, which is quite recognisable. And a lot of these features, um, other than colour obviously, can be seen um, in the fossil specimens. Um, in life, the animals, um, typical soft bodied snail, um, some have this, uh, this nape stripe, and they have. Um, two pairs of tentacles at the, um, the anterior end. So just quickly looking at the extant Bothrembrian, well, what's really important about this group is they're, um, they're in the family Bothrembrion today and form a Gondwanan element along with other members from you know, Africa, South America, and Melanesia and New Zealand. And this particular genus occurs um, in Southern Australia, that's the Bothrembrian, and it's its own family, a subfamily. Currently, there's about 37 extant species, um, and mostly confined to Mesic, Southwest, Western Australia, isolated record Northern Territory, Southeast Tasmania, and some specimens up around the Pilbara. So the group's been recently revised. Prior to this, taxonomy for fossil and modern specimens was based on 1930s um, publications, drawings, and um, was quite outdated. So there's been some really um, useful publications that have come out to revise the taxonomy. So. Looking at the fossil Bothrembrin, there's seven um, extinct species that um, have been described. Um, a few of these have been done, two from Sharp Bay, two from Point John de Casto down in the south, uh, southwest of Western Australia, and one from Ro Karanai. They're all done by George Kendrick, who worked here at WAM, and two other older um, species were described, one from southeast Tasmania and uh, one up there in lower uh, Northern Territory. And these according to literature are, the, are older, being uh, tertiary, probably Miocene from uh, this locality and um, a yellow travertine, probably Pliocene. The, spe the species that were described in Western Australia were all um, Pleistocene, Tamala limestone, so a, a little bit younger. So I've, yeah, I've mentioned where they're from, um, but basically the collection um, which George had worked on a bit um, present a really good opportunity to update the curation uh, with taxonomy and explore a few questions, which I'll get to in a moment. I should add that this, um, this is also a component of other studies we're doing on the genus, and what really kick-started it is we're doing a molecular um, phylogeny of, of, of the group, and in order to understand the ancestry, we, we're looking at divergence timing, which we decided to look at the fossil collection, and then seeing how much of a large data set it was, it was a really good opportunity to um, explore the fossil Bothrembrin collection in more detail. So just quickly, um, one of the first steps is to assemble the modern biogeography, but also the fossil biogeography, um, which hasn't, hasn't been done yet, and look at is there any differences between those particular time scales. Um, obviously curate the large WAM collection to the current taxonomy, um, and look at what's available in the fossil collection and define some geological ages for some of these species, some of the extant species as well, which hadn't been done yet, and obviously feed into the divergence timing for the, the molecular phylogeny. And another aspect I wanted to explore was look at the shell sizes, so taking a population, um, a fossil population, um, and comparing that to a modern population, seeing if there's size differences. George had um, done some work on the shark bay species and found that there was a reduction in size, probably due to aridity, um, but I'd like to further explore this with other species and, and populations. So hypothesis or questions, just to really, to, to finish off, does the fossil biogeography differ from modern biogeography in, in, the, in the group? Uh, does the geological age of Bothrembrin differ from what's been known in the literature? So with more samples, not just from the WA Museum, but also incorporating other records from other institutes and museums over east. 
can we um, define the geological age better and does shell size differ over time within um, a species and finally does this data provide insight into the origin of Bothram Brin and um, its radiation so to do this as I mentioned um, I've gone through starting to go through the WAN paleo, paleo collection you can see I'm new to this area and <laughs> working with some recent texts and obviously updating coordinates there's a lot more uh, modern applications like Google Earth and other things to really get a, um, a good fix on where the specimens came from getting them registered where we needed to and then obviously in, um, pulling in other records and that's pretty well the end um, yeah, we're working towards getting that published later in the year um, obviously I'd like to thank a lot of people Alan Limbury from Murdoch who really suggested exploring the fossil collection more. Um, Lisa, who's my supervisor here at WAM, um, some other colleagues, particularly George Kendrick, who, who people may know, worked a lot on Bothrembrian, um, did a lot of work in the um, WAM Paleological Collection, particularly Bothrembrian, and um, other staff like Mikhail and so forth for allowing the access to the collection. That's all, thank you.